This episode is brought to you by the Denver Art Museum. This Friday, don't miss Untitled Artist Takeover at the Denver Art Museum. Enjoy live performances, art making stations, cocktails, and interactive moments that invite you to become a part of the evening's festivities. Friday's event will include offbeat art tours, spoken word performances, comedy and musical performances, one night only art installations, and so much more. Reserve your tickets today at denverartmuseum.org. Today on CityCast Denver. In order to have an excuse to try a bunch of ice cream, we put four local shops up against each other and ultimately decide who has the best ice cream in Denver. Plus, stick around till the end of this episode for a short interview with our sponsor, the Regional Air Quality Council. Today is Thursday, July 27th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Hey, Bree. Hi, Peyton. Hey, Bree. So we're together today to talk about ice cream. Do we count this as a battle? This is absolutely a battle. Okay, we're this is the an most important battle. battle we've done in a long time. Yeah, we haven't done one in a while since tacos, maybe. I mean, the energy in the room when everyone was coming in this morning and there was all these pints on the table. It was like ice cream day. It was ice cream day. It did yeah. feel a little bit like pizza and ice cream in elementary school yeah, when you got like to have a pizza party or, or something. Okay, so we're talking about ice cream in Denver. And before we get to how Peyton chose our contenders, Paul, I think you need to introduce our special guest. Thank you. Yes, it would be my honor. We have a very special guest. He's the biggest ice cream fanatic I know to the extent that he at one point got a job at one of the competitors today to learn their secrets uh, he's also a stand-up comedian, host of the Left Hand Right Brain podcast, my good friend, and I don't want to tell other listeners that extortion is the best way to get on the show, but he did threaten to stop listening if we got our <laughs> ice cream battle wrong. I mean, based on what he was saying during our tasting, I believe that. He oh, knows more than sure. any of us at the table combined. Uh, J.D. Lopez is here. Welcome to the show, J.D. Hello, everybody. Hey. Hey, J.D. Happy to be here. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> tell us yeah. about our resident expert. Yeah. Tell, tell us, us about your relationship with ice cream. I mean, other than you have a tiny spoon in your shirt right now, that was your yes, tasting spoon. A tiny gold spoon. All right. Beautiful. Doing it right. I also have an ice cream tattoo. I don't know if you saw oh, it. Oh, hey. Nice. Okay. Nice. Uh, Devotion. But the love of ice cream came first. I mean, I can, one of my earliest memories is me with an ice cream cone in my hand. Cake cone. Cake cone Cake from, cone. do you remember where it was from? Or was it just like a homemade? Yeah, it was like, home? yeah, it was a home scoop. Multiple scoops? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was fitting as much as you could on there. Like a know? cartoonishly large? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And people are Picturing like, there's it. no way you're going to be able to eat that, J.D. Why, why didn't you just put that in a in a bowl? I'm like, you <laughs> And your whole life you've been trying to prove Dude. them wrong. <laughs> <Yes>. Keep, <laughs> it <out of> <laughs> Keep it out of the bowl. Keep it out of the bowl and in my mouth. Uh, uh, and even when I go to like... Like some of the places we went to today, I'm like, I want a triple scoop, and they're on a cone. They're like, that's going to be pretty big. I'm like, yeah, just do it, just do it, kid. All right, it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> they're like, okay, all right, Peyton, tell how did we get here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about these competitors. Yeah, so I started out the way I always start these food battle research projects. Um, I put a call out to our listeners and our readers, and our inbox and our voicemail box was flooded with stuff um what i learned is that denver has way more ice cream options than i ever could have imagined and a lot of them have diehard fans so i got a lot of recommendations from listeners and readers and that wasn't a great place to start because the variety was so vast um so then i did some good old research listicle research um from all the you know hot publications westward 5280 303 and then i narrowed it down to like a handful of the faves. This was a big production, you guys. Yeah, this is a highly specific I, and proprietary formula for yes, narrowing it down. Exactly. So don't ask us for details. Can I list our, our contenders? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I went, we went with Little Man, obviously. So when I didn't list Little Man in the newsletter, um, when I was calling out for ice cream submissions, people freaked out. They're like, how are you not including Little Man? How are you not including Little Man? And I was like, well, just calm down now. Little Man's kind of the whole reason we decided to do this episode because Little Man is, you know, they kind of 
run the ice cream really game. Dominate. And we were like, is there anything that can hold a candle to Little Man or, or stand a chance? So so Little Man was there, right? There are there are big our big giant. The big yeah. man, if you will. Because well, they also own like <laughs> sweet man, cooties and dang. Yes. And, you know what I mean? It's Which not I didn't just realize little all man. of those connections um, until yeah. I was doing my research. But then I found, um, well, we wanted an old school like an OG Denver ice cream place. And Brie, you know, is the expert of OG Denver stuff. Um, so she nominated Licks, which yeah. I agree with. We got some call-ins for Licks. They're they're good. They're old Denver. And then I found M's. We got some recommendations for M's ice cream. They started as an ice cream truck. And they kind of have this, like, um, just a very, very humble beginning. And we'll get into that later. And then a we also... A new guard. Yeah, they're kind of the new... Yeah, yeah. The new hotness. Yeah, well, yes, but I would actually say Sweet Action is because they seem like the ice cream brand that is on Little Man's heels. Mm. They seem like they're the ones that are going big. They're they're the ones that are coming after the big guy. So all that to say, those are our four contenders, and that is how I picked them. And now, speaking of Little Man as like the dominating uh, ice cream purveyor here, JD, you worked at Little Man. Yes, uh, I did. Uh, Right. Uh, as we we're all coming out of the pandemic, I had gotten furloughed from my job during the pandemic. And I was like, what? I should follow my passion. People are like, do what you love. Right. Eat ice cream. And, well, yeah. And I was like, well, <laughs> if I do want to do that, this is the time. Yeah. And uh, I call, uh, called Little Man Factory. I was like, are you guys hiring? They're like, yep, come on in. And uh, I got a job as a what I think the title was pastry cook. But because uh, they do everything by hand there, you're baking the cookies that go into the bits. You're baking the cakes that oh. go into the ice cream cakes. Everything there is done by hand. Wow. Uh, I also churned a lot. I wasn't a scooper. I was a, a churner. I worked in the kitchen. This is the new factory one out on West Colfax? Yes, yes. That's uh, a cool location. I mm-hmm. like that. We, we, should we start with Little Man? I yeah, think I a, should. We're kind of talking about it. I Let's think talk we about should because that's helpful context, JD. Thank you. That's interesting to know. Uh, their whole thing is it's, it's shaped like the inside of a uh, ice cream churner. You know, to, and so it's like Willy Wonka esque factory. I love that all their locations are themed. You know, you yeah. got the churn, yeah. you got the uh, the airplane one. Yeah, the airplane one. <laughs> Sweet Cooey's is like throwback. Sweet Cooey, yeah. Sweet yeah. Cooey's is so beautiful it in is Congress a, Park. It that is a shade really of blue. Good, yes, it's a really yeah, yeah. good looking place. JD, tell us something about Little Man that we wouldn't know from just from the other side of the counter. You know, you were on the inside, you were baking these cakes and churning this ice cream. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, everything's done by hand. So when we bought the to go pints, I mean, somebody took that from a larger tub and scooped that into a pint by hand. And so it's so, really fresh. Yeah, everything's done by hand, which ultimately I think is why I ended up quitting is because they're writing that line between <laughs> super big, like, hey, we're manufacturing on a big scale, yeah. but they're trying to keep that, you know, home churned thing. But And so when you're just getting told, you know, like, hey, work faster, you know, and you're yeah. like, hey, we can't get this done in time, like blah, blah, blah. So some some of that, you know, compromising uh, that and it's yeah. like worrying about compromising the integrity of the product, but also not exploiting right. your work, which I loved working there. It was fun. But, you know, ultimately the workload. Much. Yeah, because when you're churning, I mean, you have these three gallon buckets that you're doing everything and you hand fold all the bits in. So my shoulders by oh the end of the day God. were just so I mean, I was hurting. I was hurting physically for that stuff. I mean, and, you know, they got people doing that all there all day. So, I mean, they're really committed and they love it there. Do you so. feel like it, like, took the shine off a little it bit? It broke me okay. physically, yes. <laughs> Spiritually, <laughs> but, emotionally. But, but you're still, still like, a fan. Yes, that's how good say, it is. <laughs> I would say because you, while we were doing our tasting, which we'll get into, you really, like, gave us the background and, like, you really had thoughts about the flavors. And so it's not that you're not a Little Man fan. You just saw behind the curtain and it was maybe too much for you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I think if we saw behind the curtain of a lot of things we like, we wouldn't want to <laughs> oh, yeah. work mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Not podcast, though. No secrets there. <laughs> no, no editing whatsoever. <laughs> Everything's all cool behind this curtain. It's 45 minutes you guys didn't hear. Just yeah. like that Paul cut out. <laughs> um, so we, we went to each of these places. Each one of us took one and we got two pints. One pint we, we asked for their most popular flavor and one pint was, an, was a your choice. So, J.D., you went to Little Man. Tell us about the two pints you picked, and then let's talk about it. What, how do we all feel? Okay. Uh, I went there, and I got the Salted Oreo. Obviously, their flagship. That's what made Little Man into the powerhouse it is. And it was an accident, actually. You know, the, they when they first were making the uh, ice cream batch, they put salt in there instead of sugar, and then they ended up refining the flavor till it, it became Is like that a real flagship. story, or is that just one of those lore things? I mean, that's what they told me. Hey, I mean, I wasn't there when it happened. Whether it's lore or but... not, it works. It's <laughs> and, and good PR. JD pay. and I were talking during our tasting, sorry to, to pull an aside, but 
I do you think that little man kind of started the salted Oreo craze? Because like that's everywhere now. And you can find that at any ice cream shop. It's like a staple now. But I don't feel like I had it until little man. I, yeah, that's where I was introduced to it as, as well. Uh, I do think it's for a more refined palate. And uh, I think everybody's trying to, to jump to on that bandwagon mm-hmm, right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll just start us off with a take here. Salted ice cream? No thanks. I don't like what? that salted Oreo at all. That was way too Again, salty. We talked for about me. a refined palate. You're wrong. <laughs> I know. Paul. I was Are waiting we... <laughs> for you to. You're going to give was... Paul and I some jabs because I'm with you, Paul. <laughs> I actually liked the salty and the sweet. It was too salty. I was like, all I'm tasting is salt. Yes. It is. It is. It was. It was especially salty. I feel like. But as somebody who loves salt, I enjoyed that. <laughs> salt on ice cream as a whole. Three thumbs up. Yeah. You're doing it wrong, Paul. I it's agree like, with if you. If it's subtle, if it's subtle and it's like it emphasizes the other flavors, like there's another salted uh, yeah. ice cream we had on the table today that I much preferred. That I can tolerate, but this one was it should, as, the flavor shouldn't be salt. Uh, yeah, as our colleague Michael, who was in town, uh, described, he said it was salt and Oreo, and I totally mm-hmm. agree. Mm-hmm. Not my mm-hmm. not my fave. Okay, defense. I mean, I think it enhances the flavor of the Oreo. I mean, I I enjoy it. I think it gives it a good pop with the vanilla. Uh, The creaminess of the Little Man ice cream, I think, is superior to some of the other ice creams we had. And I think that's just because of, uh, you know, the fat content and not using as many preservatives in their stuff. Mm. Um, But the quality of ice cream is top notch. And uh, I mean... The salt is where, I mean, I've I've taken plenty of people there to try the salted Oreo and they all say, so salty, but they don't stop eating it. (laughs) So (laughs) That's true. I've I've watched that happen. (laughs) So (laughs) the other one we got from uh, Little Man was the banana pudding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big controversy between me and my wife. She was like, you should get the space junk. And I was like, my favorite's the banana pudding though. But I know (laughs) banana is a, is a divisive flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flavor. But I went with my heart. Peyton, what do you think about banana pudding? I, as somebody who loves banana pudding, um, it was it was good. I liked it. But we had another banana flavor on the table that we will get to later that, again, wow. I much preferred. Wow. But I do love banana pudding. And Same. it had the little Waffle vanilla wafer here. bits. Okay. So. <laughs> well, glad on the, that you did this clarification here, JD, because you said waffle bits just now. When I was taste, I was a little bit, uh, I was being delicate in my tasting because <laughs> yeah. I thought those were banana pieces and uh, I was like absolutely not you know what ruins a fruit salad banana you know what wow. probably ruins ice cream real banana that yeah. is quite the take Brie I didn't know oh, you, you so I have anti- extreme banana. opinions yeah. I love bananas straight up just a banana but um after I learned that it was cookie bits or like waffle yeah, it's like a vanilla wafer, wafery uh mm. cookie then I tasted mm. it and it was good so that's a nice addition it gives it a little bit of a crunch okay. Um, but I'm I'm with you, Pay. There was a contender that I surprisingly liked more because it was more banana y. But to be fair, this is banana pudding right, flavor. Different. This is not banana flavor. And it tasted like banana pudding. Yeah. So if if it's a more subtle flavor, I would say. Yeah. There's a vanilla custard in there. I remember making yeah. this one for sure. Okay, we, tell we us. We pureed the bananas in there. I mean, we make the uh wafer uh, you know, by hand, crumble it up by hand, put it in there. The ro- the bits in yeah. Little Man is what makes the ice cream. I think Good yeah, ice cream has fre- good bits, and they're it's fresh. yes, hmm. and that's what the competition. I was always looking for bits when I went to the other locations. I was like, "What do you have the most bits in?" <laughs> and uh, what's your bit to ice cream ratio, <laughs> yeah. please? Oh yeah, sixteen-year-old yeah. behind uh, the counter tip. Ask for the bits. <laughs> that's that's what you want. You want good bits. Uh, this was right. good. This was this was expert ice cream help for me. I, Thank it, you. It is good insight. Um, so we we've <laughs> talked about the banana, and there was the other banana flavor. Let's go there next. Yeah, segue there. That's so that's M's. Yes. Um, and Peyton, Roasted I think banana. yours was M's. You want to tell us a little yeah. bit about M's before yeah, we talk so, about the oh yeah the cream. Um, M's was something that everyone wrote in, and and I had largely heard of all of. I had heard of a lot of the ice cream places that people were sending in, but I had never heard of M's. And so they started out in 2014 as a food truck. Um, Then in 2018, just four years later, they opened their first brick and mortar in Park Hill. Um, And they now have a second location in Wheat Ridge. Um, And their whole thing is their owner. His name is. His name is not Emily. No. So their owner, yeah, the, founder, Emilio, the founder of this ice cream place is M&M? Andrew Silverman. He named oh. it M's after his, his wife. 
dog oh, wife. Okay. His, do- his no, wife. his wife. <laughs> his dog. His wife. <laughs> um, and his child. Andrew is Silverman grandma. is from Maine. He's originally from Maine. He now lives permanently in Denver. But when he came to Denver, as we've heard in oh. so many of these food chain stories, um, he missed East Coast ice cream. And my first thought was east coast ice cream there's a style he they say on their website the m's serves specifically new england style ice cream the difference is as silverman says quote new england style ice cream has a higher fat content a creamy velvety mouthfeel and holds flavor really well the way other people have described it is dense ultra rich ultra creamy and it has a three ingredient custard base organic cream egg and cane sugar so anyways, that's kind of their story. They started out as this, as this humble little food truck. Uh, I love now a good marketing growing. story. Which I ran into on Santa Fe during their first Friday. I was, I was oh, first introduced in it as, to M's as the food truck. Yeah. Okay. Very oh, cool. and they, their, their big thing, similar to Little Man, is they make everything from scratch, even their chocolate chips. Everything is small batch churned, no GMOs, no food coloring, all 100% organic certified. Glad you brought up the food yeah, coloring. We'll have to talk good. about that later. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the banana. Actually, we got two flavors from M's. We got the. Um, I, I should say maybe this is my part. I picked up the pints, yes. so I got to do the choosing for the M's. Um, I went with the salted caramel because they said that's their most popular, and then the roasted banana uh, because that's the scoop that I tried when I was in the shop and I liked. So I thought I wanted to share that with you all. I got to say the roasted banana, I I was very skeptical. I was like, this sounds gross. Mm -hmm. But roasting something like a banana pulls all the sugars out. And I think that's what made this one more banana-y. It was way more banana pudding. And not in, it was good. I, in a good in way. A nice way. I really not liked in an that. artificial banana wave. That but roasted, like a, yeah. It so. tasted, yeah, it was like Pleasantly somebody surprised. made a banana creamy and sweet and delicious, mm-hmm. which is what they did. Yeah. I loved it. This I would go as far as to say that that was probably my favorite ice cream on the table. Wow. wow. I am a big Damn. banana person, <laughs> but I uh I loved it. I thought I I thought M's was so good. I had no expectations going into this with M's and I loved them and I do feel like compared to the others, which we'll talk more about, I did feel like it was creamier, it was richer, it was thicker. I thought it was delicious. That's, I that's my take. What about, what about you guys? To, to figure out if it was good I'm ice cream or not, but I, the thing. roasted bit, the roasting is genius. It's what made it so good to me. Um, I mean, I did not like the roasted flavor of the banana. I thought it tasted like an overripe banana. Hmm. Um, that is a ba- that is a fine line. Yes, I, I could feel line. like. Have you ever had a brulee banana? Yeah. yeah, and I like yeah, it. That, I do like the brulee banana. But I didn't like it in the flavor. Which is like a t- when you take a blow torch to a mm-hmm. yeah, 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 with the with yeah. the sugar glaze on, yes. on top. I mean, yeah, so good. Um, but uh, yeah, I did think this was very creamy, and I guess that's from the fat content, more of like buttercream, uh, more of the gelato texture in the ice cream. I did. I, my wife and I talked about how this was the dark horse in the race mm-hmm. here because that's the one. Uh, I didn't have the flavor you guys had. I had the lemon flavor, and that's the one I've been thinking about since I went there. Mm-hmm. Out of all the ice cream places we went to, and there's the one in Reed Ridge is pretty close to our house, so that one's pretty nice. Uh, we did the salted car- oh, wait, oh, yeah, salted 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 caramel? Oh, yeah, salted caramel. So great. In yeah. my Again, not not yeah. enough of a salted flavor. I guess I'm so used to the little man you must one. Because That's I thought I the balance was great to mm-hmm. me. It was salty and it had that buttery finish that good yes. caramel it does has. Have a, had a butter. So the flavor good. from this kind, the their ice cream does have a robust flavor. Yeah, yeah. And I it's not it artificial, great. right? We're no. so used to tasting artificial flavors now, where you're just like, oh, this is. It tastes like you're eating an air freshener. Theirs is clearly yeah. fresh, made with actual caramel, made with love. I talked to one of the kids behind the counter and he was saying that, yeah, this is all natural ingredients. You know, we churn it at our other location, which I like that they do there. Um, so this could be good competition for Little Man? Yeah, that's what this one I do think is the closest to the okay. quality of a Little Man. Mm-hmm. I think if anybody's mm-hmm. on the heels, it's Little Man. It's- and uh, one big knock, no trip scoop. You can't get a trip scoop there. They only have double. Mm. Uh, no triple scoop on the menu. I took a picture of the menu just in case you guys want to see it. Just to make sure people know that you can't order not a, a lot of scoop. Not a lot of toppings, just saying, on the menu because, I mean... <laughs> just throwing it out there. I mean, these how, are things how, that we talked about vibe in shop. So how about half a scoop? I went into an ice cream what? place once. I only need a little bit of ice cream. Yeah, I always get the kids. And size. I was like, hey, 
your single scoop's really big. Could I get like half that size? And they were like, no, we only serve one size. And I said, well, I'll still pay the full amount. I'm just, I just not going to finish throw a half that. Of- yeah. This is an Amzo, get- right? No, okay, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. There. It was probably somewhere in some mountain town. And I was like, can I just have a smaller? And they were like, no, one size. And you're going to like, I'm going to go stand okay. over the trash can and scoop wow. half of this in the trash right now. <laughs> I mean, I like that. I like that. I mean, that's a confidence. I mean, were these high school kids behind there? Were they just like, we don't want to argue just, with you, it lady. Clearly <laughs> just take what we would give you. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, you know what? That's probably what it was. They were just like, I'm not going to, no. Like, I don't need I'm, to waste I'm here for one job. You, I scoop ma'am. ice cream. I, mean, I was taught I how. I want the most ice cream I, I can get. That's why the trip scoop is important to me. <laughs> All right. Variety as so, well. Seems like Little Man may have stumbled a little bit. Ems is coming up strong. We got two more competitors we're going to talk about after this quick break. This episode is brought to you by Wana Brands. Wana Brands is North America's fastest growing producer of premium cannabis infused gummies. This woman-founded and woman-led company based in Boulder offers vegan, melt-proof THC gummies in a variety of flavors and uses. They've invested thousands of hours of innovation into a line of cannabinoid-powered products called Wana Optimals. The newest Wana Optimals formulation is called Quick Calm. It's calibrated to help relieve anxious feelings and spiraling thoughts in just 5 to 15 minutes. These fast-acting gummies are powered by a blend of CBD and a rare cannabinoid known as CBG, which work together to calm your mind. So whether you're a hardcore cannabis lover or are simply seeking a plant-based way to enhance your daily wellness, Wana has something for you. Learn more at wanabrands.com. That's W-A-N-A brands.com. All right, we're back. Um, what do we want to talk about next? Bree, how about yours? We could talk licks for sure. Uh, okay, so I really, like you said, I really gunned for licks. I was like, you know what? We got to have an OG Denver. And OG Denver to me is like pre-1980, if you can. Pre-1990, if we're going to push it. This was uh, opened in 1976. It, uh, it's it, They've got locations currently in Denver and Conifer, but I think their like, iconic location is the Denver location, which is at 13th and Vine. So if you're ever driving down 13th and there you see the line out the door and around the corner, that's like a summer staple to oh, me. I love it. I, my wife and I, we used to live like the perfect walking distance away oh. from Licks to make that an evening walk. Yes. And it would just felt great. It's the go wait in line, enjoy the parlor. The wait in the line is part of the experience. It's yeah. one of those places to me. I think the same thing. Yeah. Do you Little think man. like when you get to talk with your whoever you're with and like look at the menu and then you you know what I mean? It just like I don't know. Licks it's, has it in spades. It does. And I, I saw a Yelp reviewer who was like, the inside of this place is pretty boring, but the outside is beautiful. I was like, yeah, exactly. You're just going in to get the ice cream, and then they have a gorgeous patio. Um, or you can walk over to the park. That's the other thing I recommend because it's right by Cheeseman Park. Yeah. It's like a couple blocks from Cheeseman. So Such a good location. It's a, it's perfect. Um, it was formerly known for my old Denver heads as Lickety Split. Um, they changed their name from what I can tell from my minimal research was about 10 years ago. They changed it to Licks. But when you go to Licks, you can see in the window, there's a neon sign that still says Lickety Split. So hmm. if you want to be an old curmudgeon like me, still call it that. And no one will know what you're talking about. <laughs> um it is currently owned by the Thompson family since 1999, as far as I can tell. I don't know who owned it or started it before. Their story hmm. is very murky and not online. So if you know the backstory of Licks, listeners, I would please, love to know. I would, 1976. I, die, I am dying yeah. to know. I'm dying to know. I'm also interested in the name change, if anybody has any hard information on that. Uh, things <laughs> no one else cares about. Okay. So uh, so we, so we you, you picked two flavors, Colorado Mud and Green Nerds. Yes, I. Why? Well, I had a very sweet teenager helping me, but I also had a screaming toddler who was screaming ice cream like repeatedly. So I didn't get to spend a ton of time in there. And I asked her what the most popular flavor was, and she started with Colorado Mud, and then she told me like seven other flavors. And you're like, I'll just take whatever okay. that first that one was. is. I was yeah. like, please That's just fine. give me two pints and get me out of here. So I, Colorado Mud was the first one we started with. I I got chocolate and coffee out of this one. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. I thought it was good. It was a little rich. For it was me. very rich. But anything with chocolate and coffee is going to be rich. Yeah. Mm, I, okay. Chocolate and coffee is a combo. Coffee, not always. Ha- it's There's ways to do coffee ice cream better, I would say. I would say not my favorite because it was so rich. It had a little bit of a crunch. And sometimes that's like to mimic coffee grounds. Sometimes it's just cookie. Mm-hmm. I like that part. But um, I don't know. What did you guys think? 
I liked it. Yeah, it was great flavor. I wrote down, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Love that one. These are not giving uh, helpful feedback uh, here. Uh, well, I'll defer for green to the, nerds, I wrote down, black. It, we're going to get there. <laughs> kind of you upset hold. that you brought that one. That was my intent. <laughs> not good. We're not getting there. I need to hear from the ice cream expert, though, JD. What did you think about Colorado I mean, Mud from Licks? I thought it was a heavy a heavy flavor, yeah. The, the chocolate was very rich, but I don't think it was a... You know, it wasn't like a high Baskin Robbins esque variety of flavors. That's uh, why I like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, then you're going there with your kids. With you basics. know, they want a bubblegum flavor. You know, they want. That's me. They're not going for the salted Oreo. That's for sure. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, and then you know, this one. You know, I'm a connoisseur. Okay, guys, I want you to know, I'm I'm taking the testing seriously. I'm aerating my my taste buds. I'm coating. We did. My you mouth. made us watch a right. video yeah. on. I yes. mean, you brought a special, brought a special spoon. spoon. I got a gold spoon. Spoons. I'm I'm eating it with. Okay. So when I did this, I got a lot of artificial flavors and then a lot of sweeteners. You know, things that you uh, you just didn't taste in the other one. So it stood out a lot in this lineup okay. to me. Uh, yeah, and then it just it wasn't as creamy, you know. It just is like that yeah. kind of store bought quality. Although I did ask the the lady behind the the counter if they made it there, and she said they did. Yeah, because can we add that JD, as part of his research, went independently to every single one of these <laughs> we places? We all did not. Respect, respect. But Which JD is, did. You know why we have him here? So. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, the green nerds. Does anyone want to stick up for the green nerds? <laughs> Hell yeah, it was my favorite one. Really? No, it yeah. was not free, was it? Oh, oh yeah. I will God. say it reminded me of um, when you get bubblegum ice cream. My favorite flavor I of ice cream. I am not someone uh-huh. who likes the like super artificial ice creams, but growing up, I think it's a nostalgia thing. I loved bubblegum ice cream. I also, it is my favorite. I actually did not, I think they had a bubblegum and I didn't get it because I thought that would gross you guys out too much. But I picked green nerds. Over nerds, huh? <laughs> bubblegum over nerds. Yeah, interesting. Well, I don't know. Bubblegum bubble. is controversial because like, okay. it's yeah. not a thing you just like eat a bunch of. It does, yeah. You know what I mean? Okay, we've been living different I, this, lives, I, I guess. I know, are you a big leak chew <laughs> yeah, guy? I mean, is that what's going on? Not big leak chew, but I would put the bubble yum. I'd have pockets full 50. when I was in school. Because <laughs> my aunt would get the big tubs. So I would just take handfuls. <sighs> I, think, double um, bubble. I think the Green Nerd speaks <laughs> directly to what JD was saying about it being more about experience there mm-hmm. and speaking to the kids. And like, you know, what what like eight-year-old isn't going to want to try Green we Nerds? We should say it's Green Nerds, but the ice cream is blue just straight yeah, like out neon. food coloring yeah, and has blue. nerds in it and it has okay so that's where i want what i want to get to is this tasting made me realize this was the only flavor we got of something that had a candy in it mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. not a buttery chocolatey rich thing and that's really what i like in an ice cream i'm a sorbet person i like limes and sour yeah. flavors and i also like I go to Sonic and I get a drink. I you're, get a slushie with nerds in, the, in it. I think you're in the minority. Though. I totally Yeah. Am. I think most people, when they think ice cream, they think rich, creamy flavors like that. Chocolate, yeah. toffee. And I want like bubblegum, nerds. Yeah. Like, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. You know. Yeah, whatever so it's nostalgic. Weird. I think the nostalgia factor there is very important. Yeah. So if you're trying to impress a seven-year-old, yeah, licks, licks the place. rules. Well, this is a great segue to our last competitor, Sweet Action, mm-hmm. which was mine, which is the South Broadway standby. This is like, if you're going to that South Broadway scene for a night, going out for a few Perfect drinks. Perfect dessert. Maybe a stop for a scoop at Sweet Action. They've now, got that great little open, they've got the garage door where you can sit and people watch on Broadway, which is unparalleled. The wafting waffle oh, cone smell yeah. just Love tempting it. you. You got to go in and get us. And then- you see their menu, and it's all these alcohol flavors. Mm. I feel like that's an important thing to talk about. I with didn't sweet realize action. that. Yeah, they have a, a that's their like partnership staple, I think, with to me mm-hmm. is the alcohol flavors. The Stranahan's whiskey brickle. Yeah, whiskey they have brickle. Yeah. I'm but, sorry. Did um, you say whiskey brickle? I think so. What's a I think brickle? That's what they have. Uh, it's like little chunks of uh, caramel, like, uh, hmm. like brittle. Like a yeah. It's like well, it's like brickle? a yeah, just uh, crystallized sugar. Okay. So, all right. So, from Sweet Action, <laughs> I chose the pints, the salted butterscotch, which the teen said was their top seller the five years in a row. So, <laughs> that's something. And then I also went for the cold brew coffee because I thought that was the prettiest colored pint. I like the way you pick your ice cream, Paul. Yeah? <sighs> yes. Okay. Great. Weirdo, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> How did you all feel about the cold brew coffee? Because I think that one was my favorite ice cream on the table. That got three wows. That was a wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Great ice cream. It, really it, it was nice. my. It was definitely my second favorite behind the Green Nerds because a, I'm a, I love coffee ice cream. But what I loved about the cold brew at Sweet Action was it's a lighter ice cream and it had a stronger coffee flavor. So I that's what I really yeah, like. It, is it like, basically it feels tasted like a, like a, it tasted like like a, a creamier cold brew. 
you, it's, it's a cold brew you could chew. It's almost kind of like a, but it's almost kind of like a frappuccino, and you can squeeze. Yes, it's like a latte. It's like a frozen latte almost, in that like it's got that creamy part, but it's not overpowering. I have to say that's why I. That's I mean, it was it was fine. Why it was good like ice it? cream, but like I am not a. I'm not. I don't drink coffee. Oh, I love um, coffee. So like it was fine, but like I'm, my opinion's biased because I I don't like coffee. If you don't, like, yeah, I get it. If you don't like coffee, you gotta like coffee if you yeah. want. Yeah. yeah, JD, I'm not the biggest coffee fan, but this one didn't have coffee grounds in it, which the other one did. But that it did have a lighter flavor. It was creamy. It was creamier than the other one we had. Uh, but the vibe at Sweet Action, I think, is another big one, a big yeah, Denver uh, staple. Uh, what, what surprised me when I, we went in, though, is that they didn't have the display fridges there anymore. So oh, you couldn't they see don't? the. No, because well, uh, the team behind the counter told me it broke. Oh, so, interesting. Which is unfortunate. Really now they expensive. just have like a wall there. Yeah, which is not as good of an ice cream experience overall for me. I want to see the ice cream. I want to taste it, you know, and they're so busy. You couldn't really take take it in, yeah. I thought. Same thing with Licks. It was so busy. We couldn't really enjoy ourselves as we were there. Uh, but I mean, that's a high that's a high quality problem, I guess, for a place to have. But the, the thing with little uh, sweet action has always been my enemy because of all the liquor flavors. I'm like, I don't mm. keep your liquors out of my ice cream and I'll stay out of your bars is my, <laughs> has always been my, my, you know, it's like, that's not what I'm going there for. And I did try the whiskey one when I was there because I thought that would be the signature flavor. It was so potent. It was very. That's was, good. That's just good. I've had good. it before. It's super strong. That's good to know, I think. Is it? So is there whiskey in it? So all of these liquor yes, flavors, it is, is there liquor in malt? there? malt. It is uh, made with Stranahan single malt whiskey infused cream and a generous jumble of sweet butter brickle. So yes, it and is then made like with what that. are the other flavors? Like are we talking like margarita? Mm, they had the white Russian. The white one. Russian one. I had a scoop of that in the store. That flavor was very mild. That's kind of my main yeah, it's issue like, with white sweet Russian action. Is it's like, just like just milk. Yeah, it, it was just it was not. It was, nah. and they've done a lot of beer flavors. I mean, Little Man's dabbled in that as well. I get it; it's like a trendy thing you have to do. But I'm not a fan. I, I think know. that's just like you know, Sweet Action's trying a lot, but you're not actually getting anything for it. I mean, I I think Sweet Action sold out to me because like, they don't they have to turn it in a bigger warehouse now because of the volume they're doing. I yeah, mean, I was you can get them say, in stores. Four There's four locations, which is good for them, and, and they're also in, the grocery, in, yeah. in big grocery stores. But you're just not going to get the quality of a Little Man. Mm. Which I do want to speak to the vibe of the little man store. They're all unique and great for kids as well. <laughs> Anyone else have a take on the sweet action ice cream before we uh, try to pick a winner here? What was the other one we salted butterscotch? Oh yeah, which we all liked. So yeah, I Wait, didn't like as much as the salted Oreo. Just throwing that out there. Uh, I wrote tolerable level of salt. Yeah, I, I did too. I said good balance. I didn't sweet love salty. it, but I just don't like those salty ones. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. What do you like, Paul? What do I like? <laughs> oh, long walks on the beach. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Pizza. Side note. Which of these ice cream places offers the best walk? Is Licks. it Licks? I think it's Licks. Pants down Licks, Licks, yeah. I mean, that place was packed. My wife went there, and I went there twice to try and get in. We went, like, Sunday night. See? It was, like, too much. The and then, like, Tuesday, we're like, we have to do this, though. But the line moved very fast. It does. Which is nice. Yeah. But, yeah, super packed, you know. Uh, well, I mean, the the... The little man, the OG spot, little man. That's yeah, a great. That's, that's true. a great neighborhood. That's fi that's fair to say. The milk jug. I, yeah, but also you too with that one. If you want to like, someone's coming to Denver. They want to do something fun. That little man. In, I would go to that. Yeah, one. The area people sure. call Low High is perfect. The view yeah. is awesome. It's just. It's like, really exceptional. It also just shows you what, how beautiful like a nice dense neighborhood is. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, very yeah. not suburban over there, and it's a cool. It's like if you want to impress someone with how cool Denver is, that little man's. Anyways, cool. that's a tough one. Those are two. If you're looking for ambiance or walk ability with your ice cream, it's going to be Little Man or Licks. Okay. For me, those are the two finalists overall. Little Man and Licks. Best, Licks? Is, I know over. my my Licks. Licks. Yeah, ice cream. I didn't love, but the, the vibe is like top notch. And okay, I'm going down on my own experience. sinking ship, saying You're the going. Green Nerds was the best. <laughs> yes, yeah, all right. Your vote has officially <laughs> been invalidated. The vibe over the ice cream flavor. <laughs> a little, yeah. A little if we're talking, bit, yeah. if we're talking like ice Licks. cream flavor, uh, it's M's all the way. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's M's. both of their flavors today were. Among the best, I would, the roasted yeah. banana and I the salted caramel. I would give the roasted caramel. banana a vote. Yeah, 
I'm, I mean, this I just, I know I'm going to be the only one on the Green Nerds trip, so I can disqualify myself and just give you another vote. <laughs> no, I think, but I will be a licks person till I die. I think if, totally if you really wanted to push for licks, we could probably make that happen. Today, I don't but think so. Are you I, kidding? I, I don't right know if you it. see JD's face, but I he's agree. just I like blasphemy. I think licks for ambiance licks for, um, for sure, M's for ice cream, and JD's going to throw something at JD, me. Tell, I mean, tell Little us, Man's got all tell those us. things. The experience, they have slides at the at the. They have factory slides? and at the I will yeah, say, at the milk shout jail. out, they do awesome Wait, what? events. They have like slides for the kids. I've, they have events every yeah, night. I they plug the Little Man bingo. events like three, three times a week dancing. in the newsletter. Yeah, they're doing all kinds they of stuff. They have great events. slide. Yeah, oh, I got to take my kid because yeah. you want to ruin a line, take a toddler. They do not And top notch ice cream. This is good to know. Well, what do we, I don't know. How are we feeling? We got to pick one here. What's What's the best one? I think, okay, so JD, your vote is clearly Little Man. Yes. Your vote is clearly like screen nerds. Yeah. Paul, it's you and me. I can't vote for Little Man off the ice cream today. I didn't like either of their ice creams. I, based on what was on the Paul, table, we that's go there not all the, the best time. ice cream. Same. We My go vote there is... all the time, Paul. It's, it's, it's <laughs> he good, goes there because he loves you as his show friend. Up today. That's not what is matters. Is that really no. All that matters you know? is today. <laughs> what matters is today. And it was M's. You think it was M's. I'm, yeah. I, so I you said go. M's. didn't even go. You didn't I know. Go. I did. Did you say Licks? I, uh, I love <laughs> Licks. I love Licks. <laughs> I could be swayed for M's. Yeah, sway for M's. <laughs> it's good. You have to sway him, Pay. Green That's nerds? the point. Okay, but look, if we're talking quality, Paul... You agree. Come on. Lix has the most artificial flavors. They're catering to eight-year-olds. Yeah. That's you are that's the vibe man. you want to go with? What's your number two, JD? Ams. Okay. Ams it is. Swinging votes. I, I, I came into this little man fan. That's, you know, for sure. I'm and taking I you back home to man. Brighton and <laughs> leaving you there. <laughs> but Ams crushed, you guys. That creamy mouth feel? Mm. Yeah, I I, can't, I went into this knowing I was going to lose. So whatever you guys go with, I'm fine. Paul with. picked did, it did just because that was the only flavor he tasted. That's <laughs> what you what said. That's the only reason you picked the banana one is because that's the first one you took well, a taste of. I, I tasted it at the shop and I really liked it and I wanted to share it with you all. And it was it was and delicious. It was very good. It was very good. <laughs> it was very good, JD. I, <sighs> so what's it down? What's it down between? M's and Little well, Man. Are we just are we because all you over guys booted licks out because Paul only likes the ambiance and I'm eight years old. <laughs> yes. Accurate. I think, I think it's M's because M's was my favorite ice cream today. It was your favorite, Peyton, and it was your number two, yeah. JD. And I cannot, based on Little Man's performance today, I just won't be swayed that direction. I can't yeah. be. M's is the winner does that, today. Does that square? Does that add up? I mean, I, mean, I guess. I mean, <sighs> Yeah. I'm getting we're getting nods. nods. Malik, we're getting nods from, from Maggie and Olivia. Take my name Mike. off of this, please. M's, it is. I'm sorry, JD. You and yeah, I will I mean, be yeah, s- on get, our get, you know, and, and alone. The rest of you who wrote in with great recommendations, much appreciated. Nugs, Scrumptious, Pints Peak, High Point, Sweet Cow, Right Cream, Wal- 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 Walia. Hi, my name is Christina, and I live in Cheeseman Park area. Our favorite ice cream is Sweet Action. Even if we can't make it to the shop, we end up buying it from a Whole Foods freezer section. Salted butterscotch all the way. Hey, this is JD from Lakewood. I wanted to put it in my vote for Little Man Ice Cream being the best in Colorado, best in town, best in show. Sweet action is overrated. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of ice cream. I'm very excited for this bracket here. Thank you. Hey, I'm Natasha. I'm calling from East Denver, and I just wanted to talk about my favorite ice cream place, M's Ice Cream. They have a shop in Park Hill, and they have a food truck, and I think they have one on the west side, maybe in Wheat Ridge. Yeah, M's Ice Cream is the best. Their honey lavender is the definition of summer, and their burnt brown sugar is my second favorite. Thanks, bye. All right, well, Peyton, Bree, JD, thanks for eating all that ice cream with me. It was a pleasure. Anytime, Paul. Thanks, guys. Thanks, JD, for... I'm sorry about Little Man. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> you don't see me, you know, I, you know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's Paul. I'm a producer on the show, and I am proud to present this short interview with our sponsor today, the Regional Air Quality Council, about what you need to know about ozone this summer. 
David Sabatos, welcome to CityCast Denver. Thanks for having me. So when we last talked about air quality on the show, I think it was about the fact that Denver has fallen out of EPA compliance. Can you remind me exactly what that means? Absolutely. So the EPA set standards for various air quality issues, and the Denver metro area has been out of compliance for different issues over the years. Currently, the issue that we're trying to tackle is ground level ozone. What is the threat of ground level ozone? Folks may remember, uh, you know, the 80s and 90s where we're all trying to save the ozone layer and had to stop using hairspray, which is hard in the 90s. And we came together collectively and were able to repair the ozone layer. Ground level ozone is different. Ozone up there is fantastic. Ground level ozone is created by the combination of nitrous oxide and volatile organic compounds. A lot of stuff that comes out of your tailpipe of your car. It bakes in the sun and creates ozone. You'll notice it if you go out for an evening jog and it's been a beautiful sunny day and it looks fantastic, but you get that tightness in your chest. That's ground level ozone. Are there other health impacts that we should be aware of? Absolutely. Long-term exposure to high levels of ozone is linked to respiratory illnesses. And we really want to make sure that we're lowering these levels in the next few years. Okay. So I remember when we were talking about air quality a couple of years ago, it was such a big deal because there was this massive plume of wildfire smoke filling the sky above Denver. But that's not what we're talking about, right? No. um, Of course, wildfires are also a problem. They're not a problem we can generally address. Paul, unless you're the one going around setting fires, which if you are, I'd ask (laughs) you, please stop um, because that's a problem. That's largely a particulate matter. Ozone is something different. So you mentioned car exhausts, David, but what are the other human-caused sources of ozone? The biggest two are the oil and gas industry, and then engines that we're operating day-to-day, cars, lawn and garden equipment. And those two are about equal, actually. There's other sources as well, Um, actually paint varnishes, but ultimately it's a lot of fossil fuels. Then if those two are about equal, it sounds like it really would matter if an individual like myself made a difference in my own life. What could I do if I wanted to help out? Definitely. There's a number of things. Next time you're looking at purchasing a car, making that switch to an electric vehicle is one of the biggest things you can be doing. On a day-to-day basis, just limiting the amount that you're driving when you don't need to be. I'm really excited that RTD decided to make transit on trains and buses free for both July and August this year. That's amazing. They expanded it. I'm so excited about that. It was an incredibly popular program last year when they did just August and the legislature provided funding to make it two months this time. Switching, you know, just a couple days a week to taking mass transit, biking, walking, alternative options is huge. The other biggest thing we talk about is lawn and garden, and it's really deceptively a large part of the problem. Unlike your car, your lawnmower doesn't have a catalytic converter. In Denver, your car may not anymore either, but that's a different issue. (laughs) But operating a lawnmower for one hour is the same equivalent as driving a car 300 miles. Operating a gas-powered leaf blower is the equivalent of driving a car 1,100 miles. Well, okay. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, let's say I make a switch, I get an electric mower. This -hmm. kind of individual action can only do so much though. I mean, industry is the other big chunk. Is the legislature or are other entities in the state taking any action on this this summer? Absolutely. Um, So we work alongside the Air Pollution Control Division and the state health agency to be working on regulation for the oil and gas industry. And, you know, we really think of it as a two-pronged approach. If that side of it is half and the usage side is half, we can be tackling both simultaneously. And if we reduce the demand on fossil fuels, then we're going to reduce the need for oil and gas drilling in our state. Well, David, thank you so much for sharing all this information about air quality. Where can people go if they want even more? Simplestepsbetterair.org. That will show you ideas of meaningful actions you can be taking in your day-to-day life. It'll let you sign up for ozone alerts. David Sabatos, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed the show, why not take a minute to tell the little man about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Denver, by texting Denver to 66866. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you later. Hello.
Hello, CityCast. JD here from the Ice Cream Wars. Uh, I was going to forgive and forget, but as I was leaving the CityCast studios, what did I see in the back alley but an M's ice cream truck? Okay, this was a setup. I was set up from the beginning. I never had a fair shot. Little man never had a fair shot. And if you don't want me to shout from the mountaintops that you guys are taking ice cream bribes, all right, you better give me some of that ice cream. Okay, I want at least three gallons of lemon. Okay, that strawberry is pretty good. All right, I want a couple gallons of that. All right, I'm, or I'm going to scream it from one of these 14ers you're always talking about on the podcast. Okay, thanks for having me on.